This art journal page may look complicated, but it's really quite easy, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Creative Katie, Karen Virtual. Welcome to my channel. So this art journal page is featuring the technique, what I call reversing the stencil. It's also a way of keeping your colors bright when working on a black art journal page. Now I don't have a black art journal page, so the first step here is to apply a coat of black paint, or in my case, I'm putting TCW black gesso. I like it better, it gives a really matte finish, but black acrylic paint will also work well. Now once I get this covered, I want to make sure that that is completely dry. Now I've chosen this Spanish tile stencil. Now this has wide openings, which is perfect for this technique because whatever you see now that is black is actually going to end up being colored. Now, because I'm stenciling on the entire page and this is kind of a two-step process. First, I'm going to white out these areas, and then we're going to put color on them. I am taping it down with painter's tape. Do whatever it takes to help you get there. Now, the first step here is to take white gesso, and I'm using thick gesso. It's was regular gesso that has thickened over time just because it's more opaque. Now the and there are very fine lines on this stencil and I didn't want to worry about too much seepage. And so if you go with a thicker body paint or thicker gesso, you will help yourself out. If you're using craft paints, you may wish to use a gesso that may be thicker than craft paints, or you're just going to have to put several thinner layers and take your time. I'm using a makeup sponge, and I'm not applying a whole lot of pressure because I'm telling myself that I can come back and add more paint. What I don't want is if I push down on that makeup sponge is to squish the paint underneath the stencil. I want the parts where the stencil is to stay black. And I'm going to end up with a basically a stained glass effect. Now I've sped up this part of the video is about one and a half times. And I did that deliberately because I want you to know that stenciling takes time. I think when we rush this step by trying to put too much paint or going too quickly, that's where we run into trouble. So thicker paint, little over time, very little pressure, and you can apply layers. Now, see how some of this is more opaque, more white than other areas. And I like that because when I put colors on that, that is also going to change the tone of the colors that I put on it to some degree. Where it's more opaque, they're going to be more true colors. Where you still see a little bit of that black or gray shining through, it's going to be more muted. And that's going to give variation to your page. So here I'm just adding little bits here and there to make that more opaque to build up that variation. Now I am not going to remove this stencil. I am going to let it dry. I'm going to be patient. Because I if I'm not I'm not going to remove it because it's going to be very difficult to line it up. Now that it's dry, I'm selecting my colors and I pull out a variety of colors that I think I'm going to use. I'll be listing the colors that I actually end up using, but quite common, that's the process I go. I pull more than what I'm going to do and then I select from that. 
Now, I want a stained glass effect. So I am going to look at the pattern that's there. This is bright yellow. And just start. Now, while I'm sort of trying to keep it in the areas, I'm not overly worried if it overlaps. That just builds variation and interest into your finished piece. So some of that yellow and pink overlaps itself. And you're ending up with a little bit of orange. And that just makes it more interesting. If you like it very precise, then you're going to go a little bit slower and be more precise. So that was bright yellow, quinacridone magenta. This is turquoise. Now, my paints are either uh, Artist Loft or Liquitex Basics. It's a medium bodied paint. And I'm not getting too much on the makeup sponge. And I'm not even worried about making every section identical. Some have more paint, are darker, some are lighter. Now, the fun part of doing this technique is every time you do it, you're going to end up with something different. It's You're never going to be able to duplicate it exactly. I could use this same stencil, and I'm looking at different ways that I, uh, colors that I could have applied. This is deep violet. And these are the four colors. I only use the four colors. And these colors work really well together. They're bright, they're bold, and with that black and white contrast that I'm going to be building in, they're spectacular. So if you're unsure about color selection, these are winning colors. Start here and then try it again with something else. And again, this part of the video is only sped up about one and a half times. And I did that so you get an idea of how long it takes to stencil. Now, I really, really want to lift that stencil and peek under and see how it's doing. But I know if I do that, it's going to be really hard to line it up. So I'm fighting that urge. And I'm just winging it with the colors. There really is no right or wrong. Again, I'm being very careful to limit the amount of paint that I get on the makeup sponge, to limit how, pre how much pressure I'm putting on, because I don't want the paint to go under. I want to keep Wherever the stencil is, that part is going to be, I want it to be black. It's going to look like the leading in a stained glass window. Or that's my hope. Most stencils repeat. You can kind of look at the pattern. And go here. I'm just mixing the colors, just blend using the same colors and getting a slightly different shade. So now comes the time for the grand reveal. And 
quick pick. I love it. Look at those bright colors with that bold, the black in the background. Absolutely lovely. Now I chose to have a little bit of a border of black on each side. Now I want to figure out a focal image. And because I've got so much color going in the background and I really want that to stay, I'm choosing to keep my focal image just black and white. And I've chosen this Dragonfly stamp, which I'm stamping with archival ink, as the image. I love dragonflies. And yesterday I saw the first dragonfly in my garden and it danced around my yard. So that's where I got my inspiration from. Secrets of stamping from someone who is not a great stamper. Keep your stamp pad juicy. Hold the stamp down for longer than you think. And cross your fingers. So I'm going to cut these out once it's dry. Now, I'm not going to show what make you watch me cut all of them, but I am leaving a bit of a white border around the dragonfly. Now, usually I don't like that and I cut it right on the line, but because there's black and the bright colors in the background, it's very busy. I wanted a little bit more of a separation of the focal image from that background. So I'm just leaving, like I'm showing you here, just a very little bit of extra white. Typically when I stamp, I stamp more than I'm going to use. I cut them up and then they go in my stash or they sit in a little basket ready to be used for some other project. When I'm playing with the dragonflies, I like how some of them are going off the page and onto the side of the black. I go to my Wings and Things sentiment pack that I'm working on, and I pulled this one on a wing and a prayer. I love the saying, dragonflies appear when loved ones are near. I, I just, I think dragonflies are very mystical. Um, but I thought this was a good quote and I chose a bold font for this that stands out against that colorful background. I cut out a lot of the white around it but again I left it so that it has a little more presence and I chose to put six dragonflies just dancing across my page. I'm gluing everything down with my fluid matte medium. And once that's dry, I'm coming back with my black Posca pen and I'm outlining the sentiment. And you can see the difference. It's a very little thing, but it does, it gives weight to your sentiment, it frames it, it just finishes it off. I thought I was done at this point, but then I decided that I needed some gold. So I have my thinned gold paint, my fan brush, and I'm going to splatter across the whole page. And this just, it just makes the page. I love every part of this. Now, after you splatter, make sure you give it a good dry before you start touching it because you're very likely to smear it. It takes a little bit longer because it's kind of blobs. Removing the tape. The bright, bold, the shimmer, the contrast. Love it. 
So let's recap the steps here. We did the reverse the stencil technique, starting with a black page that's either painted or you've already purchased it black. I applied a base coat of color through the stencil after I white gessoed it. So I was black, I did white gesso, then I came back and did color. I added contrast by black and white contrast by stamping my focal image on just white copy paper. I selected a sentiment, again, building up and playing on that black and white contrast. I splattered the whole page with gold. I hope you love this as much as I do, and I hope you give this technique a try. Close-ups of the finished page are coming up. Until next time, go get creative.